もしやコスモではコスモミッツミスリーコスモ AP ラミデュアリースポーツうん、うん、うん、うん、うん、うん、うん、うん、うん、うん、うん、うん、うん、うん、うん、うん、うん、Lots of room everywhere else. Just checking the clearance between the turbo and everything around the turbo、uh, so that I know how much room I have for a heat shield.、Uh, there's tons of room, so what I'm going to do is just pull the turbo and mantle off the car, move it over to the bench, and start building me a turbine heat shield. I just need to measure the turbine housing so that I can figure out. The diameter and layout of the heat shield. So, pull the turbo apart carefully. I thought the shape of this turbine housing was a circle, but it's not. It's kind of oval. So, I'll just trace it out. As best as I can using the inside of a ballpoint pen. A series of dots drawn a half an inch away from the、uh, tracing makes it large enough to cover the turbine, and now I just connect the dots. Okay, a three and a quarter inch paper circle held in by welding magnets represents the、uh, hole in the、uh, turbine housing. So, just need to trace that out and cut it out. I'm building the heat shield out of 304. Stainless steel, and this stuff is a pain to work with. It's hard to cut, especially with a jigsaw. So, I'm betting that cutting this shape out is just going to be a barrel of fun. Cutting an inner circle out of stainless with a jigsaw. Is about as much fun as judging a Justin Bieber versus Rob Ford kissing contest. That took nearly an hour to cut out. Okay, that notch is just for the bolt that will secure it, and it's also one of the bolts that clamps down the、uh, center section into the turbine housing. Of course, these holes around the periphery are going to require just a tad bit of clearancing、uh, for the bolts as well, so just make some marks. Just use a socket to trace out the shape. Close enough. Grind it out five times. Now, this is how the first piece of the heat shield fits, and as you can see, I kind of went a bit big on the、uh, bolt clearance holes, but Well, I guess it just gives me、uh, 
more uh, room to uh, work my wrench when I put the thing back together. Uh, also, I had to clearance for the bump here, and I'll weld in a, uh, a piece to cover that after. The rear half will be almost exactly the same as the front half, just a few minor changes, so I will do that off camera. The back piece followed basically the same pattern as the front, except I had to cut out this big area because there's a big bump for the wastegate door to swing into. So this cardboard template is about what I need to make in stainless to uh, cover that up. Well, that fits reasonably well. The next step is to wrap the entire thing in stainless, but before I do that, I'm going to weld uh, four of these nuts onto the flange. Just uh, massaging the top radius of that because it doesn't quite match the other side. Cardboard will work to make a template so I know uh, how to cut out my uh, metal to wrap around this thing. Not bad. Alright, magnets don't stick to stainless. cardboard template actually fits remarkably well, so we'll just pull it off and recreate it in the actual stainless steel. needs to be bent, of course, to match the uh, curvature of the two side pieces. Uh, I think probably the best bending jig for that is going to be this welding cylinder. Bending stainless, of course, often does not work so well because it's very springy. Actually not too bad, just have to massage that a little. get a few tacks in here so I can start slowly bending this down and tacking as I go. Shockingly, it still looks like it's going to fit.
Okay, well, now I just need to chase around the entire outside with tacks. Uh, I'm going to stop welding here, of course, because otherwise I weld it completely uh, closed and I won't be able to take it off the turbine. Obviously, if I weld it on the turbine housing, it'll be there permanently and I won't even be able to remove and reinstall the turbine from the manifold or reassemble the turbo. I think that I can wrestle this thing off, that I've provided enough bendability here and enough clearance once I remove these bolts. go because this stainless really localizes the heat and it's so thin it just wants to melt away. I'm using a welding technique called chasing the rod, meaning that I never remove the rod completely from the weld puddle. However, even still, it's pulling a lot of oxygen from these gaps. So the weld colors and the uh, consistency, not great. The thing's now fully welded, but because it's a closed shape, there's absolutely zero way to get it onto the turbine. So I'm marking it right here so I can cut it in half. This is going to hurt. the heat shield sliced as one would the cheapest of hookers, there has to be a way to reattach the sides together. So what I'm doing is welding some nuts to the bottom of this plate, which will become a flange that will fit something like here to allow the other side to bolt back on. them out. 
This does not sit in the drill press. Well, with any luck, it'll fit back together. Not too bad. A little bit of tweaking here and there, but not too bad. Make some marks for the lower mounting holes. One about there. And about there. I'm just going to make two notches. Bolted down. Just going to uh, tap these washers into place so I don't have to uh, part with them while I'm trying to install this thing on the car. Space is very limited and I don't want these washers falling off. Of course, the second half of the heat shield got exactly the same treatment with the lower mounting hole. And now I can just bolt it into place. Done. Now it can go back on the car. Well, I'm betting this is really going to suck if it doesn't fit on the car. There we go. Getting to these bottom bolt holes requires a subset of finger contortions that would make one very popular on the dating scene. Now I'm not even going to admit how much time I actually have into this thing, but I gotta say, it's a pretty awesome turbine heat shield. I'm going to clean this upper intake up a bit by uh, welding up some of these unused vacuum nipples. Uh, there's some back here. So I'm going to strip a bunch of this stuff off of it. Now most of it is stuff that I need, like the TPS, the BAC valve, and the secondary throttle butterflies. But some stuff, like this cold start thermal wax, will not go back on. It won't be required because this is a mechanical way of nudging the throttle open to uh, high idle the engine when it's cold, but I will be using the idle valve to perform that function. This uh, dash pot also isn't needed because the Megasquirt idle algorithm has a dash pot function. Sometimes these nipples can be grabbed with a set of vice grips and then twisted back and forth while pulling them out. And if you're lucky, they won't break off inside the manifold. The big ones are usually easier than the small ones. <sighs> awesome. This is probably easier with some kind of slide hammer. And I'm betting from the back it doesn't look very good. Came out though. Sometimes they get stuck and you have to drill them out.
I cut these little slugs to fill some of the larger holes like the stock intake air temperature uh, sensor. I just need to peen it a bit wider. So it can be uh, jammed into the hole. You'll notice that I've also sandblasted the area to remove all the uh, crap that has accumulated after so many years of use. And now the enjoyment of welding dirty cast aluminum. These small holes can be filled just with weld filler. And then uh, what I do is put a big blob on the top. too badly actually. Since I've removed the uh, cold start thermal wax, the little lever that it uses to nudge open the throttle body um, isn't needed so it can go away. Uh, oh, that's kind of a pain. It doesn't... Okay, well this is in the way but I really don't want to remove it because it looks like there's a ton of adjustments attached so just going to knock the corner off this with the Dremel. Just doesn't want to come out. Oh, there we go. Might as well cut this thing off too. And that was previously the bracket that held on the uh, cold start thermal wax. I have the uh, now unnecessary coolant nipple clamped in the vise and I'm just pulling it out of the throttle body. There we go. I might as well save that. And that's a much cleaned up upper intake manifold. I've only left the bare necessities of what I'm using, the BAC valve, the TPS, and the vacuum actuated secondary throttle plate servo. Two vacuum nipples remain on the back because I'm going to need something for the PCV valve and what I'll do for my main vacuum line is drill and tap a hole somewhere around here which will feed a large vacuum manifold. I'll just pop this sucker back into place. Now I have a bunch of holes and stuff to fill on the lower intake manifold but I think I'll do that when I'm bored and it's not buried under everything else. I'd say that about wraps it up for now. As I was working on the heat shield and intake manifold, my next batch of parts arrived. So, next time we will be covering the installation of the air-to-water intercooler.